Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode. And today we're gonna do some more um Yu-Gi-Oh stuff today. I actually bought some stuff. Bought this uh, nice little duelist saga pack. And uh oh yeah, here's the grand opening right here. Got some of the new code of the duelist pack. I actually don't know what's in this thing, and I'm I'm actually kind of excited to see. What's in this thing? It looks like uh, we got a, of course, Firewall Dragon. He's on the core group, but we got um, looks like right here, uh, Trick Stars, and uh, then we got a new Gaia. I don't know why we need a new Gaia, but sure, we got a new Gaia. And um, then I bought some of the Battle of Legends again. You know, I, I have all my cards now. I actually did get a Final Fortress Falcon off screen i'm kind of happy about it and then this return of the duelist it was i think it was the last one in the store so i just picked it up i don't even know i, I don't even know what's out of this pack. but here's how i'm gonna do it how i'm gonna it, since duelist saga is a collection of the new cards from every tv show i'm gonna do that one last and i'm gonna go a little bit with an era thing see we got link summons new that are here and uh, this is the new era. That's the new era. And we got the two old packs. This is the end of the current era that we're going into. And that just ended. And the Return of the Duelist, which is a... I believe it's a really old pack, actually. Elemental Hero and Crystal Beast. Yeah, it's a, it's a really old pack. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to open this one first. Uh, other than that, I didn't really get anything else. But I'm just happy to... Open these with you guys, you know. I just like Yu Gi Oh! So, right, let's see uh, if you guys can see me. I'm all dressed up today. Just because I kind of feel like it. This is like my no normal casual clothes. My gosh. I am entertained by the sounds of girls playing in the pool yes, next to me. That's that's fun. That's not, that doesn't sound creepy. Don't make me say. I'm not a creep. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got. Turnabout, it's looking like turnabout, and uh, I don't know what that is. If this is a there's a face up monster on the field, its current level is different from its original level. Change all monsters on the field to defense mode, face down defense position. That's kind of cruel. Cold, uh, photon Caesar. I actually have another one of these, and they work pretty well if you got two of them. Block Golem, pretty good. Heroic Challenger, Warhammer of all. Ooh, Medalsha. Chevalier. Oh, show. Chevalier. It's supposed to be a pun on the snack. I actually don't know what snack it's supposed to be a pun of. Hey! Okay, so I got we got Charitier. Uh, three of a kind. Pretty mech cards. But I got Heroic Challenger Spartan. See, before all I was getting was Heroic Challenger. Uh, what's his name? Warhammer and uh, Heroic Defender, I think it's called. And then the Another Chronomaly card. I, I, I still don't know what the heck to do with that deck. So, that's the, the old pack. That's that's a really old pack, so I'm, I'm surprised I even got a Medulsha out of that. Um, I'm actually surprised I got uh, Heroic Challengers out of that. I don't even know what Heroic Challengers do. <laughs> okay. Hey, I already have this card, but it doesn't hurt to have another one. The Perform a Pal 5 Rainbow Magician. Space Time Transcendence. Good cards, good cards. Wolf, Life Swarm Beast. Anti Spell Fragrance. And judging by that blue insignia, you guys can't even see it. I've been holding out these cards off to the side. Boom. 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 I've been holding these cards off to the side. You guys can't even see them. I'm sorry. And, um. Oh! I thought it was Beatricia because out of the um, Battle of Legends, the one I get most is Trishula, but it's actually White Aura Whale, surprisingly. I, I actually, you know, I've never seen this card. I don't even know what it does. When this card is synchro summon, you can destroy all your opponent's attack position monsters. Shoot. We love uh, Mirror Force. I like Mirror Force. I don't know about you guys. Um, this card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. This card attacks a defense position monster and flick piercing. This card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card. 
and send the graveyard, you can banish one other monster from your graveyard. Special summon this card, and it is treated as a tuner? Dude! This is like a sweet. This is a sick card! I'm... Oh, shoot! Anti-spell fragrance! I didn't even notice that! Both players must set spell cards before activating. That means... And cannot activate them until your next turn after setting them. So, you set a card, and you can't play it. It's set. You can't activate it. That's Anti-spell fragrance is used in so many um, tournaments that it's almost unreal. How that pack is... I've not gotten any of those. That's, that's kind of surprising. But it's a really rare card. Okay. Now, fun part. Here's what I like to tell you guys about learning about these. First thing I noticed. I didn't look this up. I have actually no idea what's going on in this pack. Usually I look up what's in packs to see if I want to buy them or if any of the archetypes interest me. No. I've been purposely avoiding any indication of what might be in this pack. I do not want to know because I want this to be the first opening. I want this to be a new experience for you and me. And first demerit for me, because this is me personally. Like Battle of Legends. Take Battle of Legends. Five foil cards in every pack. It's right there. Five foil cards in every pack. One foil card in every nine card pack. I don't know what it is, but with me, in my experience, if I get a pack that's nine cards instead of five cards, Five cards means the cards are going to be better, they're going to be just overall more useful in the grand scheme of my decks. I'm not saying that you can't find good cards, I'm not saying they're all bad cards, they're going to be semi-okay cards, I guess, but they're going to take a little bit more work to get used to, or if you even use them at all. Um, but when I see nine card pack, it already raises a flag for me. And I'm just sitting here thinking, like, I guess these are just going to be, like, commons. I, I don't even... And plus, it's only one foil card in every nine-card pack. So, I hope I get some good foils, you know? <laughs> I hope I get some good foils. Um, I wish I could do top-down camera, but I, I don't like top-down camera, because then you guys can't see my face. It's just weird, because then it's just me talking. Backup secretary! I don't know... If you control a Cyburst monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. I don't know if this was in the starter deck. Hmm. Oh my goodness! I, I had to look. Okay, so I looked at this one. I was still looking at Backup Secretary. I didn't even notice this. Go, 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 Aristeria, and Dexia. I didn't think they would actually still do some go, go, go archetype. While well, another go, go, go monster is on the field. Your opponent monster cannot target go 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 monsters for attack. And it's got 2200 defense, so that's pretty good. Um, an Xyz monster that was summoned using this card gets this effect. When it is Xyz summoned, you can target one face up attack position monster your opponent controls, changes to defense position. And if you do, changes to defense to zero. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I might give that to my friend Jimmy. He uses um, kind of a Yuma deck. I'm going to say it, he, he kind of uses a Yuma deck with a bunch of numbers and uh, stuff. Launcher, Commander, all other Cybers monsters you control getting 300 attack and defense. Once per turn, you contribute one Cybers monster, then target one face of monster your opponent controls and destroy it. 1700 attack and defense, 1700 attack, 1200 defense, 4 star monster, good Cybers effect. I got to say, they're... Sure, pushing out the in backup secretary. She had um 1200, but she boosted it, I think. Nah, she was just a special summon, but still, because she's a cybers card, which means um she probably fits into the cybers archetype, which means you can link summon with her, so that's even better. Goki Twist Cobra. Okay, so this is one of the new archetypes. We already heard about cybers, this is one of the new archetypes, Goki. Um, Goki is, I guess it's supposed to be a wrestler archetype, I don't, I don't know, um, it looked like a wrestler archetype when I saw it in the show. Quick effect. I love how they put that first. You contribute one Goki monster, then target one Goki monster you control, 
It gains attack equal to the original attack of the tributed monster until the end of this turn. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one Goki card from your deck to your hand, except Goki Twist Cobra. You can only use each effect of Goki Twist Cobra once per turn. Hmm. Okay, that, that's pretty good. Um, So, I guess what the ideal situation is that you use him and then you tribute him to give your other guy effect, and then you can get both of his effects because you can... Then, and then you get both of his effects because you can tribute him, and then when he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one Goki card from your deck to your hand. Except Goki Twist Cobra. So that makes sense. That, that, that's pretty good. Let's see what. Oh! <laughs> Goki Suprex, I guess. I guess they sorted them better in this deck where you got. I don't know. Goki Suprex. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one Goki monster from your hand. And this card is sent from the field to the graveyard. You can add one Goki card from your deck to your hand, except Goki Suprex. You can only use this effect of Goki Suprex once per turn. Hmm. That's pretty good. I can see how these two can be used in tandem. Uh, Goki Suprex and Goki Twist Cobra. I can see how they can be used in tandem, because you can be like, boom, Goki Suprex, boom, Goki Twist Cobra, boom. Sacrifice him, and then you got a 34 Goki Super X until the end of the turn. That's pretty good. Okay, this next card is it's a normal monster of all things. Normal 2100 of defense, zero attack, crowned by the world chalice. Is I guess that's a, I think that's a new archetype, crowned by the, the either. I think the archetype itself is going to be called the World Chalice. Because this is a strat. This is honestly, like, this is going back to the original Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, start of the game, start of the show, start of the game. Um, when monsters had, like, really strange names for some reason. Like, this is crowned by the World Chalice. I have no idea why it's called that. Like, that's strange. Um, and it's text for, it's flavor text, because you know, these cards have flavor text. She's a spellcaster, and they put normal now, I like that. Um, the, her text reads, with her magical staff, she can channel the living heart of her world to shield her people from the mech knights that have overrun it. Mech knights, I love how that's in caps. Mech knights is now going to, apparently, I guess, I, I hope that's going to be an archetype, because that sounds like a really cool art archetype mech knights m-e-k-k dash knights it reminds me of the ignites but ignites weren't really that good ignites weren't really that good at all i'm sorry it makes me sad is that predaplant okay predaplant we're getting predaplant i don't know if you guys saw the world chalice but yeah that's world chalice um predaplant banks yogurt banks yogurt i think that's how you say that banks yogurt sorry if i'm wrong you can special summon this card by tributing one opponent's monster with a predator counter. Oh, okay. Predator counters again. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, place one predator counter on each face up monster your opponent controls. And if you do, any of those monsters that are level 2 or higher become level 1 as long as they have a predator counter. Okay. Okay. I, I can see it. I mean, I, I don't really like Predator Plant archetype. Predator Plants were always kind of stupid to me. Hey, Treasure Panda, looking pretty fly there. And you can even see Ojama Yellow in the thing. That's pretty cool. Looking like Indiana Jones. Ooh! Oh, he's got the rock. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, He's got the rock. I, d I don't, I think it was called Manwa. Manwa, maybe? I, I don't remember what his name was. But that that's just me. Like having fun with that because I, I love that card. I, I love that um card. That card looks funny to me. It looks like a potato with eyes. <laughs> you can banish up to three spell or traps from your graveyard face down. Special summon one normal monster from your deck whose level equals the number of cards banished to activate this effect. So at best he gets a three. You get a three star from your deck. Okay. Supreme Rage. Um. Supreme Rage. Yes, I'm not gonna use this card because you know you have to have you could if you control Supreme King Zark 
hard as hell to get out, I might add. Hard, hardest card, one of the hardest cards to get out, I might add, in the whole game, other than Great Moth. And destroy as many cards, as many monsters you control as possible, except except Supreme King's art. And if you do, special uh, special summon up to four Supreme King Dragon monsters with different names from your hand, deck, extra deck, and or graveyard, ignoring their summoning conditions. You can banish this card from your graveyard and target one Supreme King Dragon XG's monster you control. Attach two Supreme King Dragon monsters to it as material from your graveyard and or face up from your extra deck. Okay. Nuke cards aren't cool. I don't get I don't like this. And I'm gonna tell that's why exactly why I don't like this card. It's because it's pretty much a nuke card. It nukes my entire, as long as I have one monster other than Supreme King's Ark, which, might I add, if you have one monster on your field after Supreme King's Ark, I commend you, because that card is hard as hell to get out. But, other than that, Supreme King's Ark, and then you get to summon up to, from anywhere, four Supreme King Dragon Monsters, which is pretty much all of them, and one of each, and then you can, if we want to, target one XG's monster and add it to your day. That that's a whole lot of work for not a lot of pay for me. I, I don't like that card too much. Um moving on though, we we still got I bought I customarily whenever a new pack comes out I always buy three of them. I always buy three of them. I don't know why. I, it just it makes it so I get the uh, correct amount of variety. Um World Legacy's heart and I target two world chalice monsters, so we were right, it is an archetype. In your graveyard with different names, add them to your hand. If your linked monster would be destroyed by battle, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Instead, you can only activate one per turn. Hey, I, uh, this one I am happy about. Let me tell you why I'm happy about it. Because it's a DD monster, and I actually made a DD deck. DD Vice Typhon. When this card is normal summon, you can tribute one DD monster. Oh. Choose one DD monster, special summon one level seven DDD monster from your deck during your main phase. If this card is in your graveyard, because it, because it was sent there this turn, you can fusion summon one level eight or higher DDD fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials listed on it from your graveyard, including this card. And you can only use one each turn. Okay, so. It's pretty meh. In the deck I have right now, I probably wouldn't use it because I'm already up to like 54 cards, and that's pretty. Uh, I haven't even used this deck. I haven't even dueled with this deck yet, so it's pretty theoretical. Everything, every move I'm making, every play I come up with is pretty theoretical at this point because I've never had an opponent to try it on. But I'm pretty sure I can't. I really wouldn't use this card right now. I may put it away and think about it and. At another point in time, I might use it, but not right now. Not right now. I'm not feeling it. Emerging Emergency Rescue Rescue. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's that's really the name of the card. Emergency of uh, Emerging Emergency Rescue Rescue. Okay. That is so hard to say. If your life points is lower than your opponent, reveal three beast monsters with 300 attack and 100 defense from your deck. If your opponent chooses one for you to add to your hand, then you shuffle the rest back into your deck. And that's it. So it's it's pretty much for rescue monsters. That's good. Hey, we got a link monster, boys. Mrs. Radiant. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the card um Gain Radiant, I think it is. But all Earth Mon this one makes it's it's two Earth monsters to link, which is good. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. It's got two directional arrows going down diagonally. Going down diagonally. And uh, it takes two Earth Monsters, and all Earth Monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense. Also, our Wind Monsters on the field lose 400 attack and defense. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you target one Earth Monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect with Mrs. Radiant once per turn. I can see this being used in a Zodiac deck. All honesty. Zodiac, totally. I can see that being used. Because it's, it's basically all Earth Monsters. And that would just... Put a damper on everything. World Legacy. 
Discovery. It's a field spell. All World Chalice monsters, they already made a field spell for this archetype? Gain 300 attack and defense. Once per turn of a World Chalice monster you control is destroyed by battle or leave the field because of an opponent's because of an opponent's card effect, you can target one World Chalice monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense position. That's pretty good. Transmission gear. Woo! <laughs> Transmission year during damage calculation. If your monster battles an opponent's monster, play rock, paper, scissors with your opponent. Make the loser banish the battling monster they control face down. I could see this being used in any gag deck. This is hilarious. I would use this in a DD deck just to make it so my monsters aren't destroyed. That is hilarious. That I'm uh, that's a keeper. That that card's a keeper. I don't care what anybody says. I'm never selling that card. That's like the best card in the game. Oh, uh, perform a paddle. Perform a pal, Trump Panda. We can stop with the perform a pals. I I'm I'm completely honest. We can stop with the perform a pals. Its pendulum effect is you once per turn you can increase this card's pendulum scale by one. Max of twelve. Yeah. yeah okay. That, that's fun. Uh, when your pendulum monster is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack. That's his regular effect. You can, and you can only use this effect once per turn. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, I'd use it in... I may use it in my Odd Eyes deck. I have an Odd Eyes deck. I may use that. Ooh! Ooh! F-A Hang on my I wonder if this is supposed to be a racing archetype. That's that's pretty cool. But what does FA stand for? I know what it stands for. Formula Excel. Bet. Bet it stands for Formula Excel. That's so cool. I would throw it. Bro, if this is a synchro deck, it better be a synchro deck. Gains attack. This monster has zero attack, 1800 defense. Pretty mellow. But it gains attack equal to its level times 300. So its level is 4, so it, it's a 12 star. So it becomes 1200. Um, that's pretty good. Unaffected by activated effects from an opponent whose original level rank is lower than this card's level. Each time a FA spell, trap, or effect is activated, you would increase this level by 1. If this card is level 7 or higher, any card your opponent sends any card sent to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. So not only does it gain attack every time it, you use a Formula Excel, I'm going to just call it that, uh, spell or trap card. Um, oh my goodness. It, it increases level attack. It gains attack every time you use a Formula Excel spell or trap card. And when it's le once it's level 7, which if you boom, 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 maybe, if you do it that immediately... It'll be a 7, and if we do that, it'll be a 21-18. That's pretty good. And uh, it'll be a 7, and then it's a Dark Law, too. So anything, any card, except it's not just your cards that are banished. It's only your opponent's cards. That's so great. It becomes a Dark Law. And then we got another Credit Plan Fantasy over here. So that's fun. But that, that that's, that's sick. That is sick. Sick, bro. I can't. I want to see more. I'm... I want to see more, Konami. I want to see more. Show me more Formula Excel. I want to see it. I want to see this archetype. That, that archetype looks sick. With a capital S. Oh. Uh, we got another launch commander. Um. Oh! <laughs> Oh, yes. Destiny Hero Dangerous, boys. I didn't even think they were going to come out with any more Destiny Heroes. Quick effect. A quick effect. You can discard one card, send one Destiny Hero monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard. And if you do Destiny Hero monsters, you control gain 200 attack for each Destiny Hero monster in your graveyard until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect of Destiny Hero Dangerous once per turn. 
That is so freaking cool. Oh, that I think that just breathed new life into the Destiny heroes. Cause they don't they automatically like they're they're mostly monsters that are just regular. But they don't have a lot of fusions, honestly. They have um I think they have the fusion between plasma and dogma that you can do, which is it's meh. Um you can uh, there's dystopia guy. I, I, I call him dystopia guy. Then there's um Dustopia, which is the evolved form of dystopia. Dusk Utopia. Dusk Utopia. And um, now that we have Dangerous, and I don't think there's any other, I don't think there's anything else. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. I'm I'm just using Vision Heroes other than that. But still, that's that that's that makes me happy. That that makes me happy. Um, Air Cracking Storm, equipped only to a machine type monster. I bet you it's from. It might not be for Erica. It may not be for Formula XL. I don't know. When the attacking monster destroys your opponent's monster by battle, you can activate this effect. It can make a second attack during the battle phase. That's pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. That's what it looks like. Uh, normal, pretty quick. Pulse Mines. Pulse Mines. If you control a machine type monster, you change your opponent's change your opponent's attack position monsters to defense position. Also, until the end of this turn, if a monster is normal special summoned to your opponent's field, change them to defense position. That's pretty good. Hey, boys! We got a cracking dragon! I I didn't see what else was under there. I just looked at the cracking dragon because I've, I've been wanting to have that card. So it is a machine type. So you can use um those, uh, those cards before on it. Cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster with equal or lower level. And it's an 8-star. It's pretty much a blue eyes, it, except it has zero defense. It has 3,000 attack, though. And um, when your opponent normal summons or special summons exactly one monster, and no other monsters are special summoned while this card monster is on the field, you can make that monster lose attack equal to its level times 200. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack lost by this effect. That's freaking good. I'm sorry. Cracking Dragon is... I was most impressed by Cracking Dragon in like the first episodes of Reigns. Like that, that was that was the one I was most impressed by because it looked good and it had a dangerous effect, which made which made up for its lack of defense point. If it if it got shield and sorted, it's done. But other than that, every time your opponent summons a monster, they still lose life points equal to its attack, uh, equal to the loss of attack. And that's pretty good. Okay, what do we got? Then dread hound horde zombies zombies we're bringing back zombies now Man. no why <laughs> for every cool archetype they get a bad one I don't want to see zombies come back man zombies were always were already hell to deal with I don't want to see them come back. Oh man, and it's got it has zero attack, but it's got twenty one defense. If this card is in your graveyard. You can discard one Vendred special summon this card. See, that's why I hate about zombies. They just keep coming back. I don't like that. The same thing with pendulums, and they're not zombies. But banish it when it leaves the field. A Vendred monster ritual summon using this card gains the following effect you can only use each of the preceding effects of Vendred once per turn once per turn and this is a quick effect once per turn and this is a quick effect this is what the ritual monster gains you can target one spell or trap card your opponent controls and banish it so Vendreds are from what i've seen from this are supposed to be fusion not fusion but ritual summon cards their ritual summon, which their ritual archetype, which surprises me because I, I thought Necros was going to be the pretty much the death of ritual summons at that point. But um, I guess they're reanimating it. Ha! See what I did there with with um uh, Vendreds. So I don't know. It might take off. You never know. It might take off. I I don't know. I don't know. Three Strikes Barrier. If your opponent controls exactly three cards, activate one of this effect. One of these effects. 
This turn, your mo your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. This turn, you take no battle damage. This turn, each time your monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you gain the same amount of life points. This is a pretty good card. I would use that card. Abyss Actor. Trendy Understudy. Hmm. I don't know if you saw it. Did I show you guys the um, Three Strikes period? Okay, there it is. Um, Abyss Actor Trendy Understudy. If you have two Abyss Actor cards in your Pendulum Zone, you can tribute this card. Special summon one level one or level eight, or eight Abyss Actor Pendulum Zone. Pendulum Monster from your hand or face up from your extra deck. You can only use this effect of Trendy Abyss of Abyss Actor Trendy Understudy once per turn. His that's his regular monster effect. His pendulum effect is that when you pendulum summon a monster, you can add one face up level one or eight abyss actor pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand. So that's pretty good. I didn't think abyss actors would get a second appeal, but okay. Oh my goodness. What am I looking at? Infernity Patriarch. If this is the only card in your hand, you can special summon it from your hand. You can special summon, you can only special summon Infernity Patriarch once per turn this way. While you have no cards in your hand, and infer if an Infernity monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Why is this archetype still alive? That's my question. Why is this archetype still alive? I don't it's not that I don't like this archetype. I actually tried to make a deck out of this archetype. I made it on Yugo Pro. Does it duel? No, it's it's terrible. The, the archetype is not that good. And one, because you're effectively relying on your deck the whole time. You put you put cards on the field. They may or may not stay there. Probably they won't. Um, but you have a, you. But the whole game gimmick of the archetype is that the monsters don't gain their effect unless you have no cards in your hand. And see that problem becomes is that they don't all have actually good effects. So that when you have no cards in your hand, you can't fight back when your opponent's doing something. And you can't just, you can't do anything. It's just, to see um, something like this, I mean, I guess he's okay. He's a four star. But I'm not really looking to special summon him because he's only a four star. He's only got 2,000 defense points. He's only good early game. Not even that. Because if this is the only card in your hand, you can special summon it. So, the ideal play would be set all my Spell and Trap cards. Say I have three in my hand at the start. So I have three Spell and Trap cards on the field. Ready to wait. I um, summon a card. I summon him. I, I summon a monster. And then I have to wait till next turn. And if I draw this card specifically, then I can summon my other monster in my hand and then special summon him. But other than that, it's not really that good. He's not even a tuner. And that's the thing. That's the, when the archetype was good is when they had a tuner. My goodness. what What is this, man? I am... I'm whelmed. That's how I feel right now. I'm whelmed. I'm so incredibly whelmed. I don't know. Nothing. I, I don't want to say nothing's good in this pack. But. There's stuff that's good. And there's stuff that's bad. And there's, there's stuff that just doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to open this real quick. Because I'm running low, short on time. I'm already 33 minutes into this video. So. I don't even know if you guys can hear me. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, you guys can hear me. The sound on this is on. I hope. Question mark. <laughs> but, okay, let's start with the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Representative of all the ages of Yu-Gi-Oh! The Blue Eyes White Dragon has stood the test of time. How many cards are in this pack, by the way? New cards. Uh, I think it's five cards. Yep, five cards per pack. That means you, you know it's going to be good, guys. First, starting off, Necro Valley. My friend Jake has a deck of this. It's Gravekeepers. I don't use Gravekeepers. Boy, we got a Dandelion. You know Dandelion's always good. Next card. You guys don't even know. Necro Valley just 
do have five under attacking defense to um, great keeper monsters. Cards in the graveyards can't be touched. Essentially, negate any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place and negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard. And then Dandelion, when it's destroyed, it gives you two tokens. That's essentially the gist of it in defense mode. So that's pretty good. Uh, we got Depth Shark. I don't know what this is. If you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing. It's 5 star with 1400. Once per turn during your opponent's standby phase, this card's attack becomes double its current attack until the end of this turn. Okay, so... You play it. Okay, so if you control no monsters, you summon it. You normal summon it without tributing. And it's a good starting card because, you know, on your opponent's turn, it becomes 20. That, that's, that's pretty good. I, I can't really fault that. Uh, clashing Souls. During your opponent's, uh, during your damage calculation, if your opponent, if your attack position monster battles an opponent's attack position monster with a higher attack, the controller of the bat of the battling monster with lower attack can pay 500 life points for that monster to gain 500 attack during damage calculation only. Then keep repeating this effect until a player chooses not to pay life points. Then keep repeating this effect until a player chooses. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see how this. Is. This is pretty cool. Okay, so, it's like a battle of life points at that point. See, so say, my monster's down by 300 points, right? I play Clashing Souls. I, can, I pay 500 life points to boost my monster, 500 attack points over, over yours by 200 attack points. But then it's your turn, and you can pay 500 life points to boost yours by 500 attack points. And we can keep doing that back and forth until one of us says, yeah, I'm not paying that anymore. And then it'll be like, boom. And that's how it goes. That's pretty good. Uh, neither player takes any battle damage from that battle. Also, after damage calculation, if any, pl if any player's monster would be destroyed by that battle, send all pl cards that player controls to the graveyard instead. Oh my goodness. So essentially, you don't, you're not playing, you're playing with your life points in a battle to decide who's dead, who cards actually go to the graveyard. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I might keep that card. Uh, power Wall. During damage calculation, when you would take battle damage from your opponents to attacking monsters, send one card from the top of your deck to the graveyard for every 500 damage round up you are about to take. Also, you take no battle damage from that battle. So you pay, you pay for cards in damage. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. You round up. So if it's set, if it's in the middle, like three hundred, then you round up to the next card. Oh my goodness! Castell the Sky Musketeer, the Sky Blaster Musketeer. So happy I got one. Gladiator Beast Geyserus. I'm not a fan of the Geyser of a Gladiator Beast. I won't take time to explain them because I don't know how they work. Really? I can be on I'm gonna be honest with you. It looks like they don't use um polymerization though. Uh the effect of Castiel is that he sends cards back to the from the field to the hand from from the field to the deck, and he can change cards to face down defense. Which is a pretty good effect, honestly. And he's a 2015. Clear Effector. If this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, draw one card. A synchro monster that use this card as a synchro material cannot be destroyed by card effects. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm running short on time. Chain Summon. If you control two or more face-up Xyz monsters, target the one with the lowest rank. Special Summon one Xyz monster from your deck whose rank is lower than that Xyz monster. But the Special Summon monster cannot attack directly. Also return it to the extra deck during the end phase. Okay? Harpy's Feather Storm. I don't know. That's the art for that card. Harpy's Feather Storm. If you control a wing, wing beast type monster until the end of this turn, negate any effects your opponent activates. If you control a Harpy monster, you can activate this card from your hand. If this card is in its owner's spell and trap zone, is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can add one Harpy's Feather Duster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Pretty good. Pretty good. 
as you can see, this is this whole box is just a mismatch of cars. Holy! Yuria! Yuria! Lord of Flames! Lord of the Sacred Flames! I didn't think they actually put Sacred Beast in this in this thing. Oh my goodness! I didn't see that coming. Okay, you got me. Got me. Got me. I, that that thing's too long in effect to no to actually talk about it at this moment at this point in time. Um, just know it's pretty much like an Egyptian god card, and it works pretty much the same as Slifer does, except for each continuous spell and trap on your field. Uh, Rescue Cat can't go wrong. Uh, when this you can send this card to the graveyard, special summon two level three or lower beast type monsters from your deck. But they have their effects negated. That's pretty good. Clear, another clear effector. Um, that's pretty good. Diamond Dust, destroy as many water monsters on the field as possible. Then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each water monster. Destroyed and sent to the graveyard by this effect. Okay. Say we have five monsters on your field that are water. That's five. Uh, five monsters, 2,500. Say your opponent just happens to be using... A similar water deck, and he has five monsters on his field. It's five thousand. It's pretty good. Oh my goodness! What is with this pack? Comic Blazer Dragon Boys. One tuner synchro monster, and two or more non-tuner synchro monsters. So it takes all synchro monsters all around. Must first be sighted synchro summoned. It cannot be special summoned by other ways. You can banish this card until the end phase. To activate one of these quick effects, and your opponent activates a card or effect, and th these are all quick effects. That's the best part. Uh, when your opponent activates a card effect, negate the activation and destroy that card. And when your opponent would summon a monster, negate the summon if you do destroy that card. That monster, when your opponent's monster declares an attack, negate the attack, then end the battle phase. Bro, and what is this? A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 star synchro monster. Holy shiz. Like, I don't even know what to say about that. You held back on me. Nick. <laughs> uh, well, that, this video's going on too long. It's been about 40 minutes now. But thank you guys so much for watching. I just love talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! I have pretty much a deck now. Right here. Of the monsters that will not work together. But, thank you guys so much for watching. And, I hope to see you guys in the next video. So, until next time. Metal Gear, signing out.